Okay, algebra two, illustrative math, algebra two, unit five, lesson four is called reflecting functions. So our goal is I can reflect a graph across either the x-axis or the y-axis. <clears throat> so what do you notice? What do you wonder? So as I look at the first graph, it looks like I am, or if I look at G, looks like I would notice that is G is a reflection of F across the x-axis. Okay, if I look here, if I flip this graph, if I flip <clears throat> every point, it's going to reflect to give me G. <clears throat> and then I would also say that I wonder, or I noticed that <clears throat> over here H, H is a reflection of F across the y-axis. Okay, so if I, you know, let, let's see if I could do this here. If I, if I trace this thing here. I think it'll let me flip this. If I flip left, right, we get that. Okay, which kind of is a little off. Would be right about there. You can kind of see the reflection. All right, this is a little off. It should have went a little lower, but, but there it is. Okay, it looks just like that. <clears throat> so if I flip it back to where it should have been, if I flip it up and down, There we get this graph here that's G, okay? <clears throat> All right, so these rules here, the first four, these were in my previous videos, okay? This was in um, 5, 1 to 5, 3. So go back and watch those videos if you haven't. Um, this is what we're going to do today. So in order to reflect across the x-axis, you're basically changing the y-coordinates. So your rule is y equals negative f of x. So you just basically multiply the whole function by a negative side. Now in a table, you'd change the y coordinates by negative one. Um, if I want to reflect across the y axis, you replace x with negative x, okay? So in a table, you'd multiply the x coordinates by negative one, okay? So if you need to write that down, add that to your notes, because this is not an illustrative math thing. This is just a piece of information that I usually give my students. All right, so here's a graph. This is function f. Here's my points. They marked them on the graph, and they also were nice to put them in a table. Let g be the function equal to negative f of x. So basically, you're changing all the y coordinates. So if I were to just negative 0, still 0, this would be negative, negative 4.3, negative, negative 4 negative, negative 1.8, they all become positives. And then this becomes negative 3.9, and that's still zero. So there's that. <clears throat> Sketch G on the same axes, but in different color. So I, I'm going to use this X column and this Y column. I'm not going to use the middle one. So I go negative 3, 0. I go negative 1.5, 4.3. <laughs> I go negative 1, 4, 0, 1.8, 0, 2.6, negative 3.9, and then 4, 0. <clears throat> so now I have to sketch this. So... See how good I can do this. All right, there you go. It looks like a reflection across the x-axis. Describe how the transformation of f, um, describe how to transform the graph of f into the graph of g. Explain the equation, for how the equation produces the transformation. So 
So this is G here. So what is G equal to? Well, we have to take all the Y's and multiply them by negative 1. So there's my function. So I would say that I multiplied the Y coordinates by negative 1. Y coordinates of F by negative 1. That's how I got them. All right. Here's another copy of the graph from the earlier activity. This time, let h be the function defined by h of x equals f of negative x. Okay. So basically, what that means there is we're reflecting across the y axis because you're changing the sign of x. And again, if you go back to your rules that I had here, right here down at the bottom, there's that change the sign of x, change the input. All right, use the definition of h to find h of 0. So does your answer agree with the prediction? So if I, I guess I could just, um, well, it's not going to change because if I do h, so h of x is equal to f of negative x. So Basically, h of 0 would be f of negative 0. Well, that's still just going to be the same as f of 0 because negative 0 is just 0. So if I look at my table, f of 0 is negative 1.8. So if I put 0 here, I'm going to get the same value. What does your prediction tell you about h of negative 0 0.6? So h of negative 0 0.6 is going to be equal to f of negative and then negative 0 0.6 so it's going to be f of 0 0.6 which is 0 so that equals 0. <clears throat> so basically all I'm doing is changing the signs of the x's and my y's will stay the same so It's going to be positive 1, that can be positive 4. <clears throat> okay, and if you go back to my little chart there here, if I'm reflecting across the y-axis, if I have this f of negative x, you're multiplying the x-coordinates by negative 1, and that will give me a graph reflecting across the y-axis. So there's my table. Sketch it on the same axis. So I'm going to go 3, 0. I'm going to go 1 and a half, negative 4.3. I go to the right, 1, up 4. Oh, sorry, shoot, that should be negative 4. I knew something didn't look right. Go to the right, 1 down 4. There we go. 0 is at negative 1.8. Negative 0.6 is at 0. And negative 2.6 is up here at 3.9. All right, so I'm going to do my best to graph this. Oh man, that was bad. That is bad. Let me redo that. Struggling to use the pen here today. It's going to end up coming back down because, you you know, we didn't get any points over here, but, you know, four, I guess it got cut off. If you look here, four, zero would be negative four, zero, which would actually be more like there. So it should be more down there. Okay, so there you go. It looks like a reflection across the y-axis. Describe, describe what happened. So we would say... 
we reflected f across the y axis by changing the signs of the input inputs or in other words multiplying the inputs by negative one <clears throat> okay so my rule was h of x is equal to f of negative x okay so you're basically changing the signs of the inputs so in other words you're changing the signs of the x's all right. All right, describe, describe how to transform the graph of F to get the graph of, so we got P, Q, and R. So, so for this first one, it's going to be reflect across Y axis, translate up four. So in other words, we would have to multiply x's by negative 1, and then add 4. All right, next one. <clears throat> so the negative on the outside means we reflect across the x-axis. And then the minus 7 is going to be a horizontal translation. Right 7. Remember, the horizontal translations are opposite. A lot of people think... Oh, it's minus 7 here, so it's going to go left 7. The horizontals are opposite. It's going to be plus, um, it's going to be right 7. Okay, so in other words, we're going to multiply y's by negative 1 and add 7 to the x's to move it right. <clears throat> All right, last one here. I got negative on the outside, negative on the inside, so it looks like I'm going to reflect across the x-axis and the y-axis. Okay, so you're going to do one first and then the other. So in other words, we're going to multiply the x's by negative 1 and, I'm sorry, yeah, multiply the x's by negative 1 and the y's by negative 1 as well. <clears throat> All right, so our goal, I can reflect a graph across either the x or y axis. All right, so here's g of x um, is equal to negative f of x, and then h is equal to f of negative x. Okay, so they didn't give us a table this time, so it would be helpful to maybe make a table. So if I got, if I got x and y here, whoops, so x and f of x. So I'm going to use the points that they give me here. Maybe add a point here. Okay, maybe add a point here. I'm going to go negative 2, 2, negative 1.4, negative 0 0.8, 0, 2, 0 0.7, 1.6. 1 and then this looks like eh, 1.5, 5. So if I want to find g of x, I need to change the sign of y. So this is going to be negative 2, point 0.8, negative 2, negative 1.6, and then negative 5. So I still use the same x's. I'll use this column for x, and this will be my y's for g. So I'm going to plot them in blue here. So, oops. I go negative 2, negative 2. I go negative 1.4, up 0 0.8, 0, 2. I'm sorry, 0, negative 2. Whoops. I looked at the wrong column. Uh, 0 0.7, negative 1.6. And then 1.5 negative 5. So it looks something like that. And it looks like it's a reflection across. This should have been a little more curved, I guess. 
All right, reflection across the x-axis looks pretty good. Um, my next one to find h of x, x, f of x. I need to change the signs of x. I'm going to use these same points here, negative 2, 2, negative 1.4, negative 0 0.8, 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 1.6, 1.5, and 5. So the only thing is I change the sign of the x. So that becomes plus. I don't need to make a negative 0. So these are my new points. I'll tell you what, I'm going to circle this in red. So I'm going to plot this in red. <clears throat> so go to the right 2, up 2. Go to the right 1.4, down 0 0.8, 0, 2, negative 0 0.7, 1.6, and then negative 1.55. So that graph will look something like that. So if you look here from F to there, it looks like a reflection um, across the y-axis minus my terrible drawing. So um, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next time.